Well, things don't always go as planned. What I have here on the workbench today is a Secura anti-theft device used at retail stores. My original plan was to do a teardown on camera and show you guys the inner workings of this device. But I was too absorbed in the teardown and forgot to put an SD card in my camera. And of course, I did not notice that until I had already somewhat disassembled the device. Oops. Also, I was planning to show you how this device was intended to be used first before the teardown, but of course that footage was not captured due to Murphy's Law. Anyway, you are not missing out that much, as there is a demonstration video on Secure's website, and I'm going to play it in the corner of the video here. Also, I will provide a link to the video description below, so you can check out some of their marketing materials if you'd like to. Anyway, as you can see, one of the main selling points is that it has a built-in coil spring tensioner, so it can save you some time when setting this up, and it doesn't create an entangled mess when you are storing these anti-theft devices. Once locked, the knob turns only in one direction because of the built-in ratchet mechanism, so you can tighten the spider wrap around the box you are trying to protect. By the way, you can find this Secura brand anti-theft device widely used in many stores in the United States. But on this channel, we're more interested in how this thing actually works. And that part I can actually show you in just a little bit. You can see that there are actually two parts to this device in this close-up view. And they're not physically connected. My guess is that the active portion is contained in this larger mechanism. And the passive portion, which is the RFID, is contained in this separate puck. According to Secura, this device is AM and RF compatible. So we'll have to open this up and to see what is inside. As you have already seen in the demo video, to lock the device in place, you just press this button. And there's a pin mechanism it actually drops in place to lock the lever here. Now, of course, I have already cut out the top, but you can see here we have a hole inside. That's where this pin drops into. So let me manually place the pin in here to lock the button in place. Now the device is armed. Once the device is alarmed, if you cut the cable, you will hear that the alarm will sound. And once the alarm is triggered, you cannot actually disable the alarm by reconnecting the wire. So of course, the only way you can stop it is to remove the pin and reset the switch here. So now the alarm is disabled. I was actually expecting the alarm to be much louder than this, to be honest. The way the device is unlocked, unfortunately, is where I think the biggest design flaw is. The pin that drops into that hole and locks the switch in place is essentially held down by this spring. Let me just uh, zoom it in and focus so you can see that spring on top of this pin here. So to pull that pin up, essentially free the pin from the locking position, all you need is a strong neodymium magnet. And here I have a neodymium magnet removed from the hard drive. And you can see that I can place this on top, and I'm able to essentially lift the pin and compress the spring fully, therefore able to remove the pin from the hole that is locking the switch in place. So the strength of the magnet is able to overcome the force exerted by the spring. And you can see that there's not much security to speak of here. Based on what we have seen so far, the alarm is really just a tripwire device, so I don't expect to see much complexity inside. And by the way, I have already removed the back cover, and you can see that the back cover was actually secured by these four screws here. And of course, I have also removed the coil spring inside. But here's a picture of what it looks like before the coil spring was removed. And if you look carefully, you can see we have two coin cells inside. These are used to power the device. And it seems that the only way we can get to the inside is to actually open up it destructively. So I will be back in just one moment. And now we have disassembled the alarm. We can see that inside is really not too much to it. There is a single circuit board on the side. There is a switch, and this is where the alarm is engaged. So now let me just connect the two wires together, and I will just show you. 
it is still functioning. Oops, let me connect these two wires and now I can engage the switch. You can see that the alarm is essentially off. Of course, if I disconnect these two wires, the alarm will go off. And that's the behavior we saw earlier. Now on the other side, we can see there is a single chip. By the look of it, it's probably some kind of microcontroller. But of course, the markings are actually sanded off. So we don't know exactly what microcontroller it is using here. But nevertheless, the circuitry is quite simple here. And here's the housing for the coil spring. And this portion is just the top switch side. And you can see here we have a spring that you can press down this switch that actually will press against the momentary switch right here. And here's a look inside that puck. Originally I thought it must be some kind of RFID inside, but I guess it's actually much simpler. All it has are these two LC resonant passive devices. From the look of it, you can see that this LC device is resonating at a higher frequency because the inductor here is loosely wound. And the other one must have a much lower frequency as the inductor is densely wound. And also we have a, by the look of it, higher value of capacitor here. How these passive devices work is actually fairly simple. Typically at the exit of the stores, you have some kind of gates that have RF generators and receivers built in. When this passive device is taken through the gate, Due to the resonant frequencies of these LC circuits, you will have distinct frequency peaks detected at the receiver side. And when the frequencies match that of the tags, alarms will be triggered. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe. I will catch up with you next time.